Hello and welcome to today's video. Now this video will be particularly useful if you have experienced issues where you get intermittent squealing from the front uh, from the front brakes. This is typically, it could be if it's not the audible wear indicator, it could be that the pads are sticking against the disc. First thing to do is to get the car jacked up off the ground. As you can see here I've chocked uh, both rear, well one of the rear wheels and I'm supporting the car on the main box section here. I'm also leaving the jack in place as well. Now the road wheels, the, the bolts themselves rather than nuts, were loosened prior to starting the video. So you just you loosen them off of a breaker bar. You need a 19mm socket to completely remove them and also you will need your locking wheel nut. Once removed you have the caliper and disc available to you. Now the caliper bolts are a standard hex attachment, a standard hex bolt, which is quite nice to see because General Motors usually have some kind of weird Torx, Star Drive or uh, other arrangement. But nope, for these ones, standard hex. Remove both and you'll be able to get the caliper just out of the way. I'll just rest it on the uh, shield at the top there. Now I used a lump hammer just to knock them loose and they should, after a little bit of persuasion, just gently pull out as you can see here. It does take a little bit of persuasion to get them out. The reason why they sort of tend to stick is they do get um, a lot of brake dust actually sort of contained within the, uh, the disc itself, sort of on the disc and also on the caliper itself. Those metal caliper locating uh, shims that you can see there just get caked with the stuff. Now I've got the pads off and one of the first things that I want to do is I actually get these little shims out of the way and just generally give the area a bit of a clean with some brake cleaner and also use a bit of sandpaper or you can indeed use uh, a wire brush if it's really really rusted. Uh, you can just clean up the area like I'm doing here. Now to be honest because um, I wash the car regularly um, the car is six, uh, six, nearly seven years old now and it's in really good condition under there but that is basically because I keep it clean. So one of the best preventative maintenance tasks you can actually do with your car is keep it clean at least once a week. Now what I'm doing here is I'm getting rid of the lot of the uh, sort of in-ground um, brake dust which really sort of does get onto there and you can see that getting rid of it does leave you with uh, quite a nice little finish there not that anybody's going to see it but it is quite nice to see that uh, with the sort of regular cleaning these haven't rusted away and uh, they are sort of still fairly presentable you want to do both sides um, you can use a wire brush for this I found that sandpaper worked absolutely fine as well and you want to sort of really get into all of the uh, sort of nooks and crannies and all of that sort of business just to sort of get them nice and clean. As you can see there I'm just doing the other side on this one and just making sure that uh, it's ready to go back onto the caliper and that there will be as minimal amount of friction and stickiness as possible. Now the pads themselves actually use an audible wear mechanism um, earlier voxels I've had actually used an electronic wear detector but obviously for cost saving and um, less sort of issues in the future these ones are actually using an audible wear detector. With the pad itself I uh, checked the wear level as you can see there I've still got plenty of meat on the pad but I probably will replace them at some point mainly because they're seven years old now I mean these are the pads that came with the car so you know they are sort of getting on a little bit but you get in there with the sandpaper or wire, a wire brush and just get rid of any sort of surface rust any contaminants any uh, impacted brake dust anything of that nature and once that is sorted out I wanted to turn my attention to these uh, caliper pins now they're actually very well lubricated already um, it seems every service when I've had the car serviced um, because I, sometimes I don't have time to do it myself, but the place that I use actually strips down and lubricates the caliper pins. They don't necessarily do anything with, uh, or go into it this deep, as deep as I'm going into it, but they do get the calipers off and just grease the pins, which is, 
ideal, to be honest with you. Now, what I did before putting those pads on was I just put a smidge of grease onto the uh, pad locating shims and then just working the pad at the back a little bit, I was able to just pop it back in. That anti-squeal shim clips back onto the pad at the, at the rear. You just put a bit of grease onto that uh, to keep it lubricated. Now, with the caliper itself, I put a bit of grease onto uh, the points where it touches the front pad, as you can see there. And that just allowed it to just slide on really nicely. I don't need to push back the caliper pistons at all, mainly because, well, I'm not actually uh, changing the pads, so I don't need to push the piston back at all. But all I need to do is just get that torqued back up again, tighten back up, and we're ready to go. Now, as you can see here, the caliper bolts do tighten up to 21 pound foot or 28 newton meters, depending on the measurement that you want to use. The caliper pistons themselves, um, I think they are either 16 or 17 millimeters, so you can get a spanner into there to stop those rotating. Mine, thankfully, uh, were pretty tight, so I didn't have that particular problem. The next thing that I needed to do is just put the wheel back on. The job from start to finish uh, took approximately half an hour. Um, for the other side, it also took half an hour, so the job for an axle set is approximately one hour and that includes jacking the car up on each side, getting the wheels off, putting the wheels back on again. The wheel nuts you want to double check tighten to 140 newton meters or 103 pound foot of torque depending on your desired measurement. Uh, you'll also notice here I'm using some winter tyres because it's November at the time of recording of this particular film. And I can highly recommend actually running uh, a double set of tyres if you have the space to store your summer set and uh, winter set, obviously, respectively. These ones are actually coming up to their last season now because I got them just after I got the car. And... Uh, as you can see, there isn't much wear on them, um, but that seems to be sort of the uh, the general trend. If you run uh, tyres, winter tyres and summer tyres, they tend to wear a lot slower, respectively. Anyway, the final thing to do is, with the car started, just uh, pump the brake pedal until you get a firm feeling pedal, and then take the car for a test drive. And that is it, basically. That's all we needed to do. So, if you have found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching, and take care.